Hey guys, so I'm about to start building the uh, Airblade X130 and uh, first thing I want to show you guys is when you um, uh, start building this frame you want to put in the battery strap first because uh, after you mount the PDB getting this battery strap in is going to be pretty much next to impossible so you ought to do that first and let me show you some of the parts that I'm going to go with. I've just got this kind of plain vanilla PDB here. This is called a CC3D PDB. It has nothing to do with CC3D, it's just what they call it. Um, and I'm going to be using an F3 uh, SP Racing board, pretty common. Uh, they're like 20 bucks. Now, uh, let's see what else I got here. I'm using these uh, 20 amp Emacs uh, Lightning ESCs. And they're based on the uh, SI Labs F396 chip, 2 to 4S. Uh, they're pretty nice. Uh, they don't uh, come with uh, heat shrink on them, but they do come with heat shrink uh, available to you. Each one, each one comes with uh, heat shrink for you to put on. It's clear heat shrink, and uh, it does not come with uh, the solder on here, but it comes with these solder tabs, which I like. And I, I just added that solder to here. It doesn't come with solder already on there. And you get, uh, of course, you get your um, motor wires if you need them. But um, the motor uh, motor wires that I'm going to be using are pretty long, so uh, I'm not going to be using those. Uh, but yeah, I like I like this uh, um, ESC uh, better than the DYS. Uh, I like the way that you know they they come like this and they give you the heat shrink separate. Um, not bad. Versus the uh, some of them, the, the heat shrinks already on there. You have to take it off. You have to get your own heat shrink, so that's kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, the, mo the motor I'm going to be using are the uh, Emacs. Uh, what are these? The 1306 4000 kV, and I'm going to be running this rig on 4S, so it should be a it should be a really fast uh, quadcopter. So we'll have to see. But this is a pretty good motor. It's gotten pretty good reviews. A lot of power. Um, looking forward to uh, flying this and seeing how this performs. Now it turns out that um, some like it comes you know, this kit comes with a certain number of standoffs and screws and some spacers and um, I think for the most part you can just get away with just using those and, and just build it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna build mine sort of custom based on the parts that I have. I want to make it very low profile and, and try and maximize or optimize the space that I've got so that I don't have a lot of extra space and what I recommend is um, is uh, getting one of these it's a little box of uh, like nylon standoffs and screws I'm not exactly sure how much this was I got this a while back I think it was like four dollars or something like that they come in different uh, variety of packs but it gives you some different options on different standoff sizes so that you could um, uh, customize your the height of your stack and uh, the other thing I recommend getting is an extra bag of these um, hex screws and these are 10 millimeter hex screws because uh, the ones that the kit comes with are pretty long and um, not going to be probably not going to be using those so what I ended up doing is I sort of did a test fit with these these little things and putting the uh, 10 millimeter screws from underneath with this spacer and uh, I'll show this as I'm building it, but then I put the PDB on top, and then I'm using these um, uh, extra nylon standoffs here that came with that kit. And let me see how much these, uh, uh, how tall these are. So this one is 6.3, and so I'm using four of those, and this one is eight, about eight millimeters. So I'm using. I'm using the shorter one above the PDB, so this is going to be between the PDB and the flight controller. And then uh, this taller one, the 8mm, is going to go above the flight controller and between that and the middle plate. But I'll, uh, I'll show that to you guys as I'm building it. And as always, I'll have uh, links to all of these parts that I'm using in the description below if you want to check them out. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so... In terms of orientation, I'm not sure if you guys can see that there's little arrows here pointing forward and back, and so that's what I'm going to be using. Um, obviously, it doesn't matter which way is forward or backwards because it's symmetrical, 
that uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be building everything in that way where one direction is this way and the forward and the other one is backwards. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have my 10 millimeter screws here. Hold on, I'm going to push this up through the screw hole right there. And I'm going to put a spacer in here so that the uh, PDB isn't directly touching any of the carbon, even though there's a strap here, but if I don't do that, it's going to it's going to wobble around. And there's a little switch here on this PDB that I might use in the future for um, an LED, but I'm not going to do that for the initial build. I might do that later. So I'm going to make sure that that's off to the side and accessible. So I'm going to try and get all of these in. Let's see here, it's going to be tricky. So we get two of these in here. I'm going to take these shorter standoff, put that on. I'm going to tighten it down all the way because I need to get the other, other side in. Turn it around. Okay. I'll put the uh, on the other side and I put the screw in. And just gotta get the spacer in there. You don't want to tighten them down too much because it's metal and uh, going into a nylon standoff. And if you tighten it too much, it'll it'll strip out. So I just want them tight enough so that they don't uh, unscrew by themselves. And so that's good enough. So now that the uh, PDB is uh, mounted, I'm going to first mount the ESCs and then solder on all the uh, power wires. Power, and then I'm also going to solder on my battery lead as well. I'm probably going to do the motors at the very end because they're kind of going to get in the way and they're heavy. So that's probably going to be one of the last steps. Okay guys, a little update on what's happened. I have mounted the PDB and I create a little XD60 battery connector here. I got my positive and negative um, connected like that. And the battery is just going to uh, connect in the back here, like so. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mount my ESCs and solder my power wires. Um, and uh, probably going to mount them on some foam tape to get that a little more level with uh, the board since it's raised up. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the ESCs all mounted and soldered to the PDB. Um, because of the way this PDB is, where the positives are on one side and the negatives are on the other, it leads to this sort of crisscrossing of a lot of wires. So I ended up using the taller standoff here in between the PDB and the flight controller. And I'll use a shorter one above the flight controller. So because I need more space for these, these thicker wires. Um, I have a, a, a little, little a five volt lead here that I connected to the five volt output. It's going to give power to my flight controller. And then I have uh, this connected to the 12 volt. This is a 1.25 millimeter JSD connector. And I'm going to um, connect, use this to connect my FPV system for the uh, video transmitter and the camera. I um, use a um, couple layers of double sided foam tape here to raise up the ESC so that these wires are at the same level as the PDB so there isn't as much strain over here on the board. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm, gonna, I'm still going to put the motors on last, solder those up, and then when, once that's done, I'm going to th then wrap this whole arm here in electrical tape instead of using the heat shrink. So I think that'll be a, a better solution if I just need to do anything. I can just take the electrical tape off. I've already cut my ESC signal wires here, and I'm going to direct solder them to my flight controller, which um, at this point I'm ready to do. So. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is what it looks like uh, with ESC wires directly soldered to the bottom of the flight controller, and I got my 5 volt soldered as well. 
So I'm just going to flip the uh, board over and um, mount it. Okay, so got the uh, flight controller into place. You can see all the wires tucked in underneath there. Uh, this is how I typically build a lot of my um, stacks with the PDB and the flight controller. I, I stuff all the wires underneath there so you can't see them now but I, as uh, I showed you in the previous clip uh, that's what the wires look like before I flipped it over. And I've got my little connector here for the FPV system ready once uh, I get that to that part. Um, so now that I've got this stack here, I can show you the, the height of this and compare it to this right here. Where is it? It's uh, this one here, I think. Yeah, so I'm going to put the additional standoff on here like this. And then once that's done, it'll be about the same height as, as this standoff, which is going to go on the side here for this uh, middle section. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Be right back. Okay, guys, so I've got my little standoffs here on the four corners of the flight controller, and I have these taller standoffs that go down to the main plate. I have three of them that go on the 45 degrees to the flight controller uh, but I didn't put the one in the back because it's blocking uh, the USB port here for my uh, SB Racing F3 board so if you want to use all four uh, I would suggest getting a board that has the USB port off offset to the side like uh, I think the Naze 32 Rev 5 does and a few other F3 boards I'm not sure off the top of my head um, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. I'm going to have seven spots where this middle plate is going to be secured. So I'm not too concerned that anything's going to fall off. So you can see here that there's going to be some connections here and then screws here. So this middle plate should be relatively secure. Uh, the other thing that I did was also um, solder on my receiver wire here. This is goes to my receiver and I'm just going to be using the uh, iRange X uh, RX 800 uh, with the uh, single antenna. I, uh, I, I discovered that the problem I was having with the other one, because I got another one, is that the, the one I had on the other brushed quad that was having problems uh, was defective. I tested this one and uh, I wasn't getting any fail safe with this one so I know it works. So I'll be putting it on here. I'm going to go ahead and get this mounted and then uh, get started on the uh, FPV, FPV stuff. Okay, I got the uh, middle fleet uh, screwed in here and these are the standoffs that go between the middle plate and the top plate. And this is what it looks like inside. So I've got seven points uh, securing this uh, middle plate to the bottom plate so I think that it's uh, not going to be going anywhere. Yeah, tugging on it's fine. So at this point I'm, uh, gonna, I'm ready to put in my FPV system. So I'm going to be using this Eachine, um 1000 TVL CCD camera. And I'm going to also use this uh, Eachine ET200R. And it's, uh, I'm going to mount this like so so that the little LEDs are going to be access or visible and uh, the button will be accessible from the side uh, but before I do that I think I'm, at, this, at this time I'm going to go ahead and mount the motors and uh, solder them on and then wrap this up in electrical tape so I'm going to do that next okay guys I got the motors all soldered on and I want to show you what's underneath here I wrapped up three of them in electrical tape and uh, basically because the there's not a lot of room between the ESC and the motor I just took the wires and just kind of looped them around like this and soldered them backwards and since I was going to uh, cover up everything in electrical tape anyway uh, I'm just uh, basically securing all the wires like that it's just fine it's not the prettiest but it'll work 
So that's what it looks like. Okay guys, so I uh, decided to go with this camera instead. This is the 90 degree Banggood camera. I couldn't really figure any good mounting options for the other camera. And I thought I couldn't find this before, but I found it. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one because it's, um, it comes with this nice mount. And uh, the mount fits the slots right here perfectly. And it's actually meant for this camera. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. And uh, got the same equipment as well. So I'm going to go ahead and mount the stuff and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so for the most part this is done. I still need to put on the props and my uh, VTX antenna. But I've mounted all the FPV stuff here. Got the camera. And there's the uh, ET200R. I have zip tied to the top plate in two spots. And then I'm also reusing this zip tie that's holding the VTX as a uh, antenna guide for my um, free sky receiver which is here and you can see that it's kind of hard to see that little gray cable routing over here under the under that zip tie and then up to this hole here so I'll have this one going up and then the VTX antenna going out so let's take a look at it from this side you can see the uh, connections coming from the VTX um, going to the camera for power and audio and video and then that's the power cable that's coming out of the VTX and it's getting routed out the back here and there's that cable with the connector and then the other connector is right there so I have it just sort of secured here with a little bit of electrical tape so just to make sure that it stays out of the uh, path of the propellers because it's um, going to be pretty close. Let's see here, not a lot of clearance. Here's a uh, three-inch propeller, and you can see that it's got a couple millimeters right there of clearance. Not a whole lot. So anyway, guys. Uh, that's the end of the build, and uh, stay tuned for another video on the maiden flight. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you in the next one.